Okay, I've, um, I've never missed a free throw. Does everybody know what a free throw is? Yeah? So I'm standing at the free throw line, and about 15 feet away from me is the hoop, which is about 10 feet in the air, and I've never missed a free throw. Never. I started playing basketball when I was 12, and I've never missed. Put your hands up if you believe that I've never missed a free throw. I tell you what, put, put both hands up just so I can feel a bit better that there's more people who believe me. All right? Of course, look, of course I've missed a free throw. But that's not the point. And there's a catch to this. You see, every time I stepped up to the free throw line, I said to myself, I've never missed a free throw. Every time. Because if I step up to the free throw line and I think about the last time that I missed, then that's probably going to affect my performance. Do you know what I mean? So if I step up to the free throw line and I say over and over and over again, I've never missed a free throw, I'm more likely to score. And this is transferable. This isn't just about me shooting a free throw. This is about waking up in the morning, morning of the exam. What are you thinking? Are you thinking, oh, I'm not prepared. I hate exams. I'm not ready. I'd rather stay in bed. But I tell you what, if that's how you're going to wake up, think how that's going to affect your performance. Now, would you believe that more matches are won in training than during the games? More matches are won during training than in games. I think so. I mean, soldiers are preparing for war during times of peace. Same with athletes. And preparation is the key. And I get this. I get that preparation is the key. You see, if you gave me an axe and said, right, you've got six hours to chop a tree down, because I get that preparation is the key, I'm going to spend the first four hours sharpening my axe. Where some people might just start hacking away for six hours and not get anywhere. Preparation is the key. And successful people prepare themselves every day. Successful people prepare every day. Others prepare someday. And there are too many people that think the eighth day of the week is someday. It's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. You are all here because you're successful. You're all here, every single one of you, because you're successful. You may be successful because you've won a championship. You may be successful because you've won a match, because you've won a race, because you've made outstanding improvement, because you're a phenomenal team player, because you've got an excellent attitude, because you've achieved a personal best. You're all successful. But the problem is with success, is it's the worst teacher. Success is the worst teacher. Why? Because it tricks you into thinking that you can't lose. It can trick you. And it's important to stay prepared. All the time. Now I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And I'm going to give you something to visualise in your head. And you know... No one's going to give you a little tickle right now, okay? Just close your eyes, all right? And I want you to imagine that you're a striker in the World Cup. And this is the, the finals. And you're at the penalty spot and you're about to take a penalty and it's the World Cup final. Your shot is the make or break here Now, can you hear about 100,000 people? Oh, by the way, they're booing you. They're booing you right now. Nearly 100,000 people booing you. Millions more watching on TV, hoping that you're going to miss. Now, open your eyes. Who can tell me what skill 
is needed for you to perform that penalty shot? I'll take some hands. I'll take some hands. What skill do you need? Self-confidence? Confidence? What else? Determination? Perseverance? Pardon? Belief? Courage? Staying calm. With those 100,000 people going on, what do you need to do? Concentrate. Focus. Concentration. Concentration. Now, concentration is a skill like any other. You can practice it. You can improve it. It's a skill. We learn how to be better at it. And I'm going to tell you a story about concentration. So in the late 90s, I was playing for England, and I was playing in the Home Nations tournament, and we were facing Ireland in the finals of the Home Nations tournament. And nine seconds left. There's nine seconds left of the game, and Ireland are up by three. The Irish are up by three, nine seconds left. My teammate Danny Richards has the ball, and he dribbles the ball up the court. Eight seconds, seven seconds. I can see it in his eyes. I'm slightly ahead of him, and I can see it in his eyes. He wants to shoot the ball. He wants to go for the three-point shot. Six seconds. He shoots the three. The ball's in the air. Five seconds. Four seconds. He misses. And I'm standing underneath the rim, and I jump and I grab the rebound. I have a choice now. I have a choice. Do I shoot, which is only worth two points, knowing that we're losing by three? Well, I turned around and I dribbled all the way back to the three-point line, knowing that we had to have the three. We had to score the three. Four seconds. Three seconds. I turn. Two seconds. One second. I shoot the ball behind the three-point line, and I get fouled. Who knows what happens next? I get three free throws. Zero time left on the clock. Zero time. Three free throws, and we're losing by three. And because there's no time left on the clock, you know the free throw situation where you've got people standing down the side? They're not there because there's no time left. So we're in Ireland. I've got three free throws. And it's just me, the ball, the hoop, and a couple of hundred, hundred Irish people behind the rim booing. Hating me right now. So the referee hands me the ball, and I go through my routine. And I'll share with you my routine. So the ball gets handed to me. I spin the ball backwards in my hand. I take two dribbles. I pick the ball up, and I just take a little bounce and keep my knees slightly bent. That's my preparation. I extend my body. I extend my arm. And I miss. I miss. I mean, can you imagine this moment? I miss. I turn to my teammates. They've got their head in their hands. The coach has got his hand behind his head. Tears start to flood my eyes. But then the referee says, you're not done. You've still got two more. The pain. The pain. So frustrated, I took the ball for my second shot and I rushed it and I missed the second one. I turned around and I wanted to walk off. I wanted to walk off. And the coach said to me, no, you turn around and you make your last free throw. And that just gave me a little bit of time where I could take a deep breath. And I stood up to the line and I made my last free throw. Now I never wanted that to happen again. Never. I never wanted to be in that situation where all that pressure and I couldn't produce. 
So I practiced. I practiced and I practiced and I practiced some more. And my record for how many free throws I can make in a row is 75. Now I'm not claiming any Guinness Book of World Record there. I'm not trying to say I'm the best in the country, but I'm proud of that. 75 in a row. I'm proud of that. But it took practice to get there. It took practice. Now I've heard some great things about sport at QK. A bright future ahead of you. I've heard about some extremely successful young boys and girls who are doing some great things. But there's going to be obstacles in your way. Obstacles are going to be your, in your way. And whatever lies before you isn't blocking your next step. That is your next step. That is your next step. So don't quit. Do not quit. It's amazing that we're here celebrating your success, but you're not done. Your job's not done. Practice some more. And if you stood here and success was over there, don't think that you can walk there in a straight line. The journey doesn't look like this. It looks like this. There'll be obstacles in your way. But a river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. QK, thank you for inviting me, and I look forward to talking with you after the meal. Thank you.